and then we'll sort of tell us what your idea is. After we hear your idea, Mark will summarize it on the board, and then we'll go from there. Go ahead, sir. James Barazzi. I did. What was your name again, sir? James Barazzi. Mm -hmm. um, you, you said something a moment ago, a moment ago about um, one way on an ocean. Can you shed some light on that? Is there already one way? I mean, no, there, there's people that are talking about restricting ocean shore boulevards to one lane in each direction. Because oh, the other lane is like in your walking path. Uh, that's okay. one of the ideas that's been around for a long time. And that's a long term project because my background is as an engineer, I'm a civil engineer, and you have a driveway every 50 feet. So there's lots of challenges in that sort of an environment to provide access to a car lane and the bike lanes. Put the bike lane on the inside of the I mean, it's all doable. It was just reduction of one lane. Reduction of one lane in each direction. Yes. I don't know if you know, some of you may remember, I think Point Brown used to be two lanes in each direction. That was reduced. They took out, and then what we were left with is room to do the safe routes to school sidewalk. That's out there now. And that's the other way you go. You make it two lanes on the east or the west, you know, one in each direction. And the other one becomes a pipe. Lane. There's different ways to do this, and each have their engineering challenges. Yeah, yeah, and traffic challenges. And traffic challenges. All of this impacts people who want to drive in our already utmost rapid city to get around with, but that's okay. Richard, I would love to see a bicycle path, walking path, from the IGA to the airport. And most of that is already yeah. uh, ocean shore. City and that's on this list. Yeah. That's been on the transportation, six year transportation. Oh, no, we got it right here. So, uh, Randy, you're going to need to uh, ask to come in, raise your hand or something, or say, hey, I've got something before we come in. Randy, you're going to have to sort of let us know and say, hey, Gary, we want, I want to add something uh, in between speakers. So it's the equivalent of Zoom raising your hand. Go ahead, Randy. Okay, the Chancellor Mayor from the post office to the airport has been on the six year transportation um, plan that's passed every year for the last 20 years. The place to start with that is simply bringing sand from the beach and raising so it doesn't flood the area from the airport to the post office, and also just simply mowing it. I mow it from the bridge to the church. The church mows it all the way almost to the post office. So, and it's already set up in essence by us for people to walk there. It just, the problem is that the bridge, the walkway is on the wrong side of the bridge. So therefore over the channel, you're going to have to put a beam, three beams and a walkway across it, or you replace the bridge. As to um, the rest of the town, uh, we have very, very narrow, uh, like on Ocean Shores Boulevard, very, very narrow uh, right-of-ways. So, because you can see where the utilities are, and unless you're doing in the center or taking a lane, you're not going anywhere. The biggest thing on bicycles versus pedestrians is get the bicycles off the sidewalk per our ordinance, especially in downtown and the memorial path to the beach. And I've already spoke, spoke to um, Becky on Chancellor Mayor beach access. A bulldozer just has to go on the north side all the way to the beach for a bicycle access point. Then you have the pedestrians going down the memorial path, cars going down the roadway, and then finally, you have the now bicycle lane for all the electric bikes, Surreys, and all the rest of the stuff heading to the beach. We have that on Chancellor Mayor already. We just need to paint it. Thank you, Randy. Other ideas in the room. Go ahead, sir. I'm My name is Archie Kirkman. I'm Angelo Bruscus. I've been here 14 years. Bike, ride, uh, walk, jog, amble across this town every day. Um, I, I think first, uh, secondly, on that, we, I think we need to look at the existing right of way 
that the city has on Marine View Drive, the yeah. National Bike Trail. Yeah. Uh, we've yeah. got Whitehead Bay that's been developed there. We've got uh, Damon Point that's used more than ever. We've got the Cultural Interpretive Center where families and kids bike to that. It's a, it's imperative that we do something there that would help tourism as well as residents, and then connect the rest of Point Brown to the safe routes to school uh, spur at Taurus. That's an easy, both of them are cost effective way to do it. And my other point is that I think we need to put Ocean Shores Boulevard on that list, no matter what. Because that's the biggest public safety issue that we've had. We've had several nearly tragic pedestrian incidents on that boulevard recently, only in recent years. And if you go back in history, that we've had a, a innumerable crashes and problems with that. And I, as a reporter, once upon a time, sat through a meeting with the PUD, where the PUD has a vested interest in having a power line buried if the city would cooperate with mm -hmm. uh, the PUD, and I and our mayor knows a little bit about this, but I think that needs that discussion needs to happen as a way of really using Ocean Shores Boulevard for what it, it could be, and that would be a tremendous bike and pedestrian thoroughfare all the way from the hotels to the gate. So that I I'm worried about these electric bikes because some of those things go by me at like thirty miles an hour over the speed limit on the streets I'm on, I don't think they should be allowed. They should be in control with the cars, not with the people who are under their own steam, whether they're on a bicycle or walking or whatever. Yeah, and, uh, I, I hear you. I'll agree with you. Most electric bikes max out at 20 to 25 miles an hour. Even so, but nobody the, on a bicycle is doing 25 miles an hour. That's fast. I got it. Um, it is um and e-bikes bring a whole new swing into all of this there are a couple guys who have got souped up e-bikes in this town there's one guy that goes down sand dune about 35 40 miles an hour like where he does this e-bike but it flies when i'm out there working so um that is a problem but again speed limits apply one of the things we'll talk about and i don't want to bring this up yet we'll bring this up in detail is you know neighborhood greenways which is a very common urban solution where you get pedestrians and bicycles off of the main transit routes yeah. and try to get them onto the side streets. Yeah, yeah. Then you look at speed limits on those side streets. Yeah. I mean, to take that stretch in, in, in general, sand dune, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of sand dune missing in front of my house, but sand dune is 25 miles an hour. You can make it 20, you can mark it, you can do things. And then bikes are subject to the same speed limit as cars okay. on those areas. Go, Jane, go ahead. So. This brings up an issue that I would like to input on. Also, you bring up side streets. Yeah. Just walking my dogs on Canal Drive Northeast is you take your life in your hands every day. Number one, people speed, they don't follow speed limit. But where those roads are set up out there, you have no shoulder, you have ditch, and that's it. Um, so that's part of the issue that, you know, with the side streets or going in those areas for all the neighborhoods for us to walk the dogs or want to ride bikes out there or anything. I'm looking for an option because just the way the infrastructure was set up out there is just not conducive to anything. And we're going to take a bunch more, but the inputs are, and this may be sort of a fresh you know, maybe we look at a greenways concept, which is what I'm going to do, urban planning concept. And the greenways where you where you're asking bicycles to share with pedestrians, you may have to do things like the dreaded speed bump. You may have to do traffic control measures. You certainly do signage. You do on road signage, and you do um, you know paint people little little guys on bikes and people walking, and then you do flashing at intersections. So depending on how much you want to put into a greenway is sort of what you do with it. And that's commonly done in cities where there's no option, where they can't put in bike lanes. And that's where I've seen it done. Go ahead, over there. Hi, my name is Donna Brownlee. And back to the motorized bicycles on that, if you call it a greenway along Point Brown, 
people are using their motorized vehicles on there. Pedestrians are having to get out of the way, people with their dogs, people with their children, and it's got signs everywhere that says no motorized vehicles. Uh, so not, the question is, does uh, yeah, an e-bike or motorized vehicle, it's a great point. It's something to, to figure out what to do. Maybe we change the sign it because that's one of the only places in town that has a bike lane. I ride, I ride, I ride three days a week up and down Point Crown. I don't ride on that lane because I don't want to hit a, hit a dog. So I, I ride on Point Crown. Go ahead. So with, uh, so at Ocean Shores Boulevard, because I think that that's going to, oh, Chris and Herman, sorry. On um, Ocean Shores Boulevard, because that, as we know, is, is a difficult area to be on. And you and I are on that all the time. And I'm a runner, so I'm on it as well, running. Could we do one of those painted signs that would be, a cheaper alternative in the meantime until well, we figure out what we want to do with the share of the road. Yeah, and that's they do that in Bellingham. They do another. Well, one of the things that's a concept because I moved here from Portland a while ago, and Portland had really put in a bunch of greenways. And they actually turn out quite safe. You know, and, and we're going to get to all this. We're going to get there. The way you do that is is where they're sharing the roadway, the signage, where they have to come out onto the roadway. Let's use sand or come back on Ocean Shore Boulevard, one of the most dangerous intersections if you ride bikes in town. Slow the speed limit down, signage for the cars, say bicycles and roadway ahead, all that sort of stuff you can do, and drop the speed limit if you want. But then now we get into the, this is 40 out of 7,000 citizens, <laughs> way more citizens drive back and forth and ride and walk back and forth. Well, anytime you start dropping speed limits, we're just going to have to deal with that. And that's what we do. So Richard Wills, and an idea I've thought a lot about, and I think we've talked it. Planning Commission is a bicycle pedestrian map. How to get from here to there, staying off of Point Brown, Ocean Shores Boulevard, and and uh, um, Duck Lake. Duck Lake. Uh, Little dangerous roads. So wow. you know, uh, particularly for those people who are visiting and don't know the difference between the boulevards and the streets and the avenues. Uh, so then, and that part of the that with greenways and signage is a start. And then, you know, while we're looking for money to make Ocean Shores Boulevard one lane in each direction, if that's what we want, while we're looking at money to figure out how to take some of these um, inner neighborhood gathering roads, which is, a, which is the urban planning term like Canal Drive, which connects to all these side roads, which really, if you're going to ride, you go down and I drive, ride Canal all the time. It's one of the not really dangerous, but one of the less safe ways to do it. So as an interim, so put yeah greenway signage, and that's kind of what we were looking at. Is sort of that. More ideas. Randy, uh, Randy, go ahead. He's on yeah. mute. Oh, unmute yourself, Randy. <laughs> You're on okay. Mute. I understand. I sent in. I don't know if you can see them. The safe route to schools from both the high school and the elementary school, the law requires a two hour, a two mile radius. You almost do get all the way down to the marina on Point Brown. As to getting to the High Dunes Trail on Damon Road, on our side of the Damon Road, um, that's within the two mile radius also. And you also get all the area basically downtown. So we should be looking at the safe route to schools for funding for extending that path, taking care of the Chancellor Mayor Airport path, and many of the other locations where we can put a path, because that's our funding, so one of our greatest funding sources from the state. Yeah. And uh, definitely, I think we look at reinvigorating safe route to schools. Um, two mile radius. The other issue is, you know, it needs to connect residents. Well, that all gets looked at, and that's what we do. It's a great one. Go ahead, sir. Hi. Steve, Steve Barry. Uh, my wife, Lynn, and I just moved here two months ago, and so far we love it here. We bike a lot. Um, we're more on the south end of town uh, on Falls of Clyde, and um, there's a one issue that I'm having riding right now, mainly on Duck Lake. Mount Olympus and that is there's no gravel well, there's little or no gravel shoulder on those the shoulders have not looked like they've been I, I spent 35 years in a road building and infrastructure business I am an engineer as well 
and the shoulders are like there's three or four inch drop offs on the shoulders, so there's nowhere to bail out. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and actually, as far as a road maintenance issue on its own, um, it's detrimental to the pavement not to have a shoulder because the water sits in there, it soaks underneath the pavement. I already see a bunch of edges breaking off. Uh, the mail delivery people got to have issues with it. Um, and this is something that, sh that should be taken care of soon. It looks like they haven't been maintained in years, the shoulders. Looks like a lot of the roads were repaved and uh, they never added gravel to build the shoulder back up to the new pavement. Um, that, that's, a, that's a great point. I ride out there a lot too. Some yeah. of the different. I, was, uh, I had somebody behind me today on Duck Lake, and I had I don't place the bail out. Yeah. On, with yeah, the bike. It is. So one of the things we're talking about is we talk is also a, getting people into the establishing greenways east of Duck Lake. There's a way to get almost all the way from the coastal interpretive center to north to the. To the airport with only being on yeah. Buckley for a couple hundred years. So um, yeah, it is. And right. that's a very common great application for the Greenway. In Mount Olympus, was just, especially right yeah. by the public work building, yeah. them shoulders are in some yeah. are this deep. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, uh, as far as the ocean shores, um, you mentioned a cost of millions of dollars for that. I mean, I was in the road building industry for 35 years. Um, I mean, I've seen. The majority of it, all it would need is a total restrike and signs. Where I mean, you were talking about having to build more turnarounds, utilities and crossings. That's it. There's a lot of utilities because a lot of the prospects are to leave it two lanes. I was talking about to leave it two lanes, put a bike lane in the middle, take down the telephone poles. Why well, just make it if you're going to make it one lane in each direction, you'd make the right lane the bicycle lane and the left lane the travel lane. I mean, I'm I've driven those roads. I mean, granted, I've only been here for two months, but I'm, I've driven that that road on the weekends and that I don't see the traffic that you need that much, other than where the hotels are. Um, all you have to and, and it was slow traffic down too, because how many times have you driven in the right lane 35, 40 miles an hour? Somebody flies by you in the left lane won't bend me. Um, so if you only have one lane. Actually, it slows the traffic way down. Talk to the architect. I agree. The only issue was all over every 50 feet you got a driveway. So you got to, you yeah, got to so the people got to go around and turn. Yeah, yeah, that's but, but, I mean, if you just spent the money to restripe it and put signs, I don't just can't see where there'd be more major. I what utilities have to do with it if you kept it on the existing pavement. No, the yeah. issue again is, is yeah. it's, it's not considered by most states a safe bike lane if it's there's no. Barrier between the bikes and walkers and the cars. So if you just stripe it, yeah. then keeping cars out of it is not considered in any DOT standard a safe bike line. You need the orange pylons and all that stuff that you're used to seeing yeah. in the city. That's where it gets harder. Go ahead, man. I'm Sandra Mabrat, and um, I've lived here for three years, but previous to that, visited quite a bit with my daughter. I formerly lived in a set of Phoenix. They took a two lane road section to do one to make a bike lane in the um, one section. It was so horribly received that it was reversed within um, two years. And they did make a, a bike lane on the side. But in doing that, even, they had to curb it in order to keep the traffic um, compatible with the two lanes, putting reinstating with the two lanes that they had previous. It was very horribly received. My experience is taking a traffic lane and working in Portland, some other cities, and just striping it won't be acceptable to anybody. It needs some sort of barrier. The minimum is those orange pylons, and then with a bright. I mean, it's all doable. You just have to think through every bit of this. That's what I'm saying. They are, some things are a little more complex than you originally say. Let's just make one lane bike lane, but then going to get in and out of it and have safe separation in the back again. A couple of simple solutions to the Ocean Shores Boulevard problem in the short term would be stop signs, lowering the speed limit. We definitely need stop signs at uh, Butter Clam, that, that intersection where people are walking across there, and crosswalks. I mean, that's, that's walking across a freeway to get from one side to the next. We could use them at Pacific, at Taurus, at Butter Clam, at Marine View Drive, crosswalks and stop signs would be stop signs would be the easiest thing. Lowering the speed limit 
from 40 when people are driving 50 now. And it doesn't make any sense why you drive two lanes of traffic 20 miles to get to Ocean Shores, but then all of a sudden we have four lanes of traffic everywhere, for which just encourages the speed, the speeding of, of you know construction vehicles, tourists, whatever. And then my other my other point that I'd like to add to that is uh, to the list is we sorely need to have a connection to the new bike trail from the state park, from QBRC. There's a there's a right of way that goes down for the sewer system that could be made into a pedestrian corridor, but working with the county, the tribe, to extend the bike lane into, and so we get bikes off the highway as we're coming into town. That's a huge danger that needs to be solved. We have tourists who are riding their bikes from the state park and people are whizzing by them at 50 miles an hour and that's just a tragedy waiting to happen. You're talking the 105. The 105, yes. The 105, yeah. I ride it. Once a week, and it's the most it's favorite part of my life. The poor old Jimmy's out there every day, right? Yeah. And that's just. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's, 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 and Danielle, uh, can we just get a point of the crosswalk on Ocean Shores? Yeah, sure. Crosswalk on Ocean Shores over. That'll make, because that's already coming. That's actually already coming into the city. We figured out how to look through the house. At a minimum, you know. At a minimum, the way. And that's, and, and we talk about bike too much. That's a lot from the I'm also a walker. I walk the beach. And, you know, you can safely cross Point Brown, but you can't really safely cross Ocean Shore and Boulevard. And those are great connectors. All of those Pacific, uh, Ocean Lake, Taurus are great connectors. You've got the landing. We just need to make it smooth to cross the other ones. In the back. So, James, again, so I, I see a lot, I write a lot as well. Um, I see a lot of people walking down the center median in the grass area. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I guess that's another option putting the bypass in there with the crosswalk, but energy crossover to get into that. And, you know. and, and that's why, you know, the Ocean Shore Boulevard is going to be a detailed plan design bill. Yeah. Yeah. And the plan will look at the options, give you a rough cost. And then that's if we go there first is find the grant to come up with that. Yeah. The easy ones, as, as Randy knows and everybody knows, the easy ones are where we have the right of way. Marine View and um, basically post office to the airport. <laughs> that's and, existing area. And additionally, um, the road coming in 115, that's, that, that's county. That's not 105 the county road. Yeah, we have to work with the county to figure that out. Go ahead. We have one here first, and then I'll get to you in the back. Um, I'm Linda. Uh, my husband already explained. <laughs> uh, this might be a stupid idea, but for the Ocean Shore Boulevard area, is there any way to put maybe like a like overhead pedestrian type bridge? Oh, that's I mean that's part of the building for the boulevard, and then crosswalks is pedestrian crossing. That's kind of what it is, but yeah. I mean, no. Do you have on the list of priority to have street lighting and all these projects too? Is it? I don't think then with most street lighting, it's been a problem for a long time. And my second thing is, I think you're going to have be a problem with the high new trail having no parking, especially involving the hotel. They have, they're going to be playing a lot, I think, and maybe somebody ought to be looking at uh, uh, parking for the high new trail. Okay. We'll add that up there. Go ahead. Okay, so. Steve Barry again. Um, we we uh, used to live in the Lansing area in Michigan, yep. and they had cross a lot of crosswalks that they had, I know some crosswalks here. You press the button and they flash yellow, but they had crosswalks that first flash yellow and then they flash red, and you had to stop. Okay, and but you couldn't just have somebody press and then press it again and keep stopping the traffic. There was a timer involved in that. Is that is that something, that, especially yeah. for Point Brown in town, where you're talking about adding more crosswalks? I mean, the yellow flashers, nobody. I mean, a lot of people just drive right through. Them. Uh, it's a great point. I mean, where they have for, for yellow and red. We quote Mount. It's a required stop. It's, it's a required stop. No, not a caution. Yeah, crossing. Did you have something on there? Well, I did. I was going to say, I've been through this in 2003, and then I think it was 2010 we went through a similar uh, exercise, but we've made some progress. 
And the, the cross streets that you're talking about are already striped. <laughs> striped. Um, I think you're going to get a lot of pushback on the lighting. Unless it's taken care of, we had 289,000 birds fly past us the other night. And if we light up the whole town, that's going to disrupt that Pacific Flyway that we're part of. So we need to be aware of the kind of lighting. Yeah. And that will all go through CEPA, and we'll have to deal with all of that in CEPA. Yes, so yes. The state and the Fed will remind us of the birds, too. <laughs> so we'll so you can do little things. I, I agree. It is. And, and I think, and I've seen our public works department, have, they've done some little things. They've put in bike lanes on Taurus and Ocean Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we're just the next step forward. That's it. You know, and so to, go ahead. No, no. Uh, go ahead, finish. No, so, so to continue, though, and I know I'm selling the greenways because it's my experience has been successful. And to talk about slowing down, the one of the one of the more dangerous, and I don't ride it anymore, is Duck Lake Drive to, mm -hmm. to ride or walk on. So if you establish a greenway from Gunderson, which is basically the community center, you can stay on um you can stay on the back roads, the neighborhood roads, but again, the neighbors get a vote. You gotta remember that. Mm -hmm. So when you establish a greenway in the city. Some of the neighbors don't want that because they don't want more people walking and riding through that neighborhood. But that's the process. We do that. One of the things you look at is reversing stop signs. So I forget which one it is, but at one point you, you get dumped on Ocean Lake Road right before you get to Oyster and Catholic Gray Courts. Right. You can't, there's no way to not be on. What you do then as an option is reverse the stop sign. You mean Duck Lake Drive. Duck Lake Drive. You make Duck Lake Drive stop or it daylight's on the Duck Lake Drive. You go up. 150 meters, put another stop sign, you can back off Duck Lake Drive. And so that slows the people down on Duck Lake Drive, and it basically gets uh, traffic more under control with potential pedestrian, bike, car interaction. Well, that's a critical area, too, because you have the dog park that's there now. Yeah, just, so, just south of that, yeah. Right, and so people are going to be walking their dogs along Duck Lake Drive, and that's and that's going to be a destination. So. And, so, and so the established greenways is meant to do that, to get people off the busy roads. Richard, so mm -hmm. to riff on what you just said, 123 miles of sidewalks is probably not feasible. But we do ride that section where you've got to get on Duck Lake. There's two places. You've got to get on Duck Lake and maybe a sidewalk on those 150-yard sections possibly oh. might be feasible. So it's just an idea. It's a, you can look at it as feasible in the yeah. answer. Stop sign, you put a warning sign, says pedestrian, cyclists, and roadway, stop ahead. You know, somebody's going to blow through that stop sign a couple of times and then realize it. And then you're coming the other way, you also do a stop sign, either north or southbound. So that regulates traffic. And it's not intended, some people think it's intended to make the biker's life peace or doesn't have to stop. That's not it at all. You could do the exact same thing where sand dune has to do daylight on Ocean Shore Boulevard um, around the 600 block, just before you get to Butterfly. You could put a stop sign on Ocean Shore Boulevard, but I don't think a state engineer would let you because of sight distance from the stop sign because you're coming around the blind curve. What if you put stop signs in both directions? Yeah, I thought you'd have to do it. Four way stops. Yeah. Yeah. Four way stops are the other solution. Yeah. But you're also going to deal with sight lines and all that sort of stop, the stop signs. So there's a lot of, all of this is going to require DOT input and you just got to go with them. Can we do this? Can't we do this? And all that sort of stuff. But one of the things of greenways is where you cannot eliminate. Um, vehicle, pedestrian, bicycle interaction. You try to do signage, speed control, and all that sort of stuff in the interim. So we got a solution over there, please. Wow, my name's Sherry, and um, I I think my bottom line to the city is it's absolutely fabulous, and I just thank our city government and everybody that's doing the parks and. I just can't believe what a fabulous place we live. And sometimes when we're in these meetings, it, it kind of like you get upset at we don't have this or that, but we have a, a wonderful little community here. And there's a lot of people in this room that make that happen. I just first want to thank you all. And second, as a citizen here, um, and I, the age of our community, a lot of people are not out walking and biking regularly, but do you remember back to when we were a little kid and you had your bike and you're on your bike? And I don't know about you, but I felt pretty safe riding around on my streets. 
And I feel like Ocean Shores is that kind of community that we need to get that back for not maybe us that live here and we don't ride our bikes every day. Few people do, but not a lot of us do. But I know when I have gone out on my bike here as an adult, I don't feel safe. So safety is number one to me. I want to, I want our kids and grandkids to feel safe like I got to feel as a kid. And I think it's wonderful we're gathered and I love seeing this room packed. And I've taken my grandchildren out on bikes. We got my little trailer bikes in there for learning how to ride because I felt so unsafe. Of, I didn't know where to take them, but they want to go to the parks. My grandkids come here. You think they want to go to the beach? My grandkids want to go to the park. They have amazing parks where they live in Tacoma area. They come here. Guess what the first thing they want to do? They want to get to the parks. And guess what? They don't want to go in my car. And guess what? Grandma's not comfortable when I get off sand dune going over the Ken, Ken Peterson yeah, park. Mm -hmm. Oh, first time I did that on a bike, I literally thought I was going to get ran over. And I'm pretty able. I'm like physically able, pretty alert. And so to me, it's like, let's make this city safe, you guys. The high dune trail is wonderful. But when I go over there, I think, how could I get this without my car and parking down there? Mm -hmm. um, both ends of it. And, you know, I've already been out walking on it. I think it's fabulous. I think we're making headway, but let's get this thing safe for people. I know we and, already chatted and yeah. everything. Sand dune, on, on sand dune, my other just thing to throw out, I don't know how this works, but I know in front of my house, and I, I don't know this far back, but I've been told there's a little strip between, sand, between two houses in front of me, going from sand dune, to Ocean Shores Boulevard that the city owns. And somebody threw out here, let's get off the streets where the cars are and get on maybe some side streets and having places we can pull off into the right of ways if there is a car. Like I see moms with these little strollers out there and the edges, like you said, drop off. Safety, that's like my number one thing. Safety and let's get out on our streets we have a wonderful community. Let's walk, let's bike, and be safe with it. So. Gary, Randy. Go ahead, Randy. There we go. Um, it's fine and dandy speak on all of our streets, the wanting to have something on the side. But we have ditches for drainage. And if you're going to build something in that space, which usually isn't very big in most of our areas between the property line and the street, you're going to have to put in drainage. That means putting culverts in and drains to take the runoff from both the road and properties throughout the city. So it's a very expensive proposition in most areas. Um, someone has to literally sit down with the county GIS and look. Yes, we do have um, city both sewer and unused, um, I'll call it easements, throughout the city. In fact, there's one that goes between Ocean Shores Boulevard next to the Lions Club, all the way to Point Brown near the um, water tower and ends up between the uh, bistro place and the um, what used to be the uh, uh, mouse door or dormouse um, shop. There's a right there, the city owns it. All we have to do is clear the brush out and pave it or put rock in or something. We have a whole bunch of those green belt areas that the city owns. And those are also avenues for your green belts or paths to get people from point A to point B. We had a discussion years ago when Chief Steiner was the chief about dropping the speed limit to 25 miles per hour and having golf carts. Because what are we selling here? We sell retirement and leisure. And we promote neither on our roads. I agree. And then uh, one of the things that I didn't say that we learned about dealing with this blue zones paid for that we didn't, this very experienced city architecture says one of the keys is connect the features of the city. That's what we need to do. Connect the school, the parks, the community club. So as, as we're looking at any of this, how do we connect these? Because what you want is to allow people to move naturally. And yeah, safely ride to the IGA. Nobody put it on there, but do the uh, north end of the Point Brown Road 
because I know that's part of the uh, North End Bay project right now, but it ends. And so now you're forced to cross the street and get on that narrow sidewalk. You know, we own that piece of land too across the 12th hole. You know, finish that all the way. Absolutely. I mean, a, a simple, easy one. Yeah. And then we also deal with all the other issues. We really need to get the e-bikes off that path, figure out how to do that, all that sort of stuff. Go ahead. Oh, hi, Sarah and Eric. Uh, I have lived here for a little over a year, and I actually just live a few blocks from here. Mm -hmm. um, I have two dogs, and so we are out walking in our in our neighborhood. We try to stay on the side streets as much as possible, but I have if I want to walk more than half a mile with them, I have to either cross Point Brown or Ocean Shores Boulevard or Pacific Boulevard, and it's dangerous. I've gotten hit. I've almost gotten hit. Or my dogs several times um so yeah i think you had said you had talked about slowing down speed limits mm -hmm. um and that didn't go over and i was curious like is that something that can be revisited oh absolutely i think I, that's part of this whole process and i think as we move things in and we meet again next month we'll talk about what's really important and it may be that crosswalks are the most important crossing it's not crosswalks yeah. crossings are the most important and with those it's all that sort of speed regulation and it may be, and there's roads, if we can figure out somebody smarter than me who's an urban planner to do all of this, it may be a mixture of everything. Maybe Canal Drive and Dolphin finally gets speed bumps. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe it's going to be a co combination of all the solutions. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we can talk all we want about reducing speed limits, but unless it's enforced, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. And I, I hardly see anybody ever pulled over. Oh, I do. For, uh, I don't see a lot. No, I, I haven't seen some, well maybe on Ocean Shores, but I haven't Point Brown or any I Point Brown or Mount Olympus. I mean Mount Olympus, I see I drive it all the time. It's 30 miles an hour and I drive mm -hmm. 30 to 35 and there's people on my tail or past me. Yeah, that's and good. I very Go ahead. Seen anybody I, I hear what you're saying, and, and you have a wonderful point. I want to point out we have 10 cops to serve the city 24 7. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, we can have more cops, and I don't know what a cop costs per year, but probably 130, 140,000, 160. All in, yeah. Uh, um, so, so that's that, yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, unless, unless it's enforced, the speed limit doesn't do a darn thing. Right. Is there, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. Is there an opportunity for like more um, cameras that attach to the speed limit? And what we learned though is that also requires a police officer. Because right. police officers review all of that footage before a ticket can legally be issued, as we went down this once before. So that's sort of it. in the back. Go ahead. My I'm friend's in the back. They have money. I'm Catherine Sprague. Um, I want to revisit Ocean Shores Boulevard because I walk there all the time to get up trash and stuff. And my thought of, for a long, long time has been uh, to stick with me close off the west side because that's where people are going to want to access the beach make it one one of the lanes can be walking one of the lanes can be biking widen take some space out of the median for the east side of the road to widen it because those that road is way too narrow for two cars to pass anyway they don't pass me and you when we're walking, either worse. Yeah, <laughs> because the, yeah. literally the, the shoulders are yeah. a foot wide. So take some out of the median as we're thinking about uh, burying the power lines. They're all buried. Most of them are buried down in the south end anyway. But take some of that space out of the median, a couple of feet, so that the, the road, which would then have north and southbound on the east side, would have more space to pass one another without freaking out with the big trucks and the little cars coming at each other. Yeah. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. You know, yeah. the, the only issue we have is, yeah, that's why Ocean Road Boulevard is its own issue. Yeah. Is all, we live, all, of, all of us that live on the east side, how do we get to the road? Right. I understand that. I just said it's not like we visit Ocean Road Boulevard. But yeah. well, that's the thing you need to look at. Point that we talking about. Yeah. Duck White Drive, Dolphin Canal. Good suggestion. 
<laughs> it's, a, it's a great one. It's one thing that needs to be looked at. And then what you can do is you can connect those to the Boulevard to Marine View Drive. Yeah, absolutely. Bring it back around, finish safe routes to school on foot and ground all the way, so that we would have yeah. a big walking bike. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I, I see Ocean Shores Boulevard is going to be a heavily voted item once we decide yeah. to see what yeah. to do. Yeah. There's lots and lots of ways to do that. Again, it may be steps, it may be crossings, then it may be um, warning signs and road markings, pedestrian and roadway. And then it's the infrastructure that and you would ask me how I got to 10 million. We just got yeah. close to that. Like that. you're doing something like that. Yeah, now you're starting. Started getting up in that area. Just so that's where we got there. Go. go ahead in the back. Yes. So, Dan, again, so going to the e bike thing. Um, Probably maybe it's a it's a problem everywhere, not just open sure about it later because they're so popular. But um I know that uh, there's some cities that put an ordinance in for you know e-bikes that you have to be in a traffic lane, not a bike lane. Um yeah, and um that's a whole other thing, but um that could be done. Um of course you have to let the electric bike rental places and everybody know that you can't do that, don't require the fire finance as well, but I mean, it is, and so I've read a little bit about cities doing that and the issues they had with traffic issues. Because some e bikes go 10 miles an hour. And I know many people in this town like to ride their e bike at 10 miles an hour. And the other thing with that is, I have, you know, these scooter rental yeah. places that we have here. Um, and I, I realize it's the individual doing it, um, but people ride the scooters the, and the electric bikes in the bike lanes all the time. And, uh, you know, I'm like, hey, can you get. Out of the bike lanes with the scooters. Um, yeah, so that's it. It says no scooters. Yeah, yeah. Bike lanes are marked no scooters, but not no e bikes. We still haven't figured out how to treat an e bike yet. It's a motorized. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Yeah. But we need to come up with that something to look at. In the back again, go ahead. Uh, one, one other thing I'd like to add, and, uh, and, and this is a pedestrian mostly, and, and, but people ride their bikes on it too, is we've got two beaches that are closed during the summer, but yet they open up this weekend. They're going to. We've got the from Camps to Pacific and from Marine View Drive to the Jetty. I don't understand why we just don't keep those two beaches closed with pedestrians all year long, or at least lobby the state to be with us in that. And uh, and I think they're great pedestrian beaches, and I don't know why I, I don't understand why in the winter we open it up to traffic. I don't know. Do you know the one? I mean, if you're the historian, you were torn. It was you a lot of negotiations in the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you can. Well, in the 70s, they tried to close all the beaches to cars, right? There have been several moves to close all the beaches, and those go nowhere. You have to go to the State Parks uh, Commission oh, yeah. and, and, and deal with them. But but they uh, we, but they they acquiesced to the, the closures that we have now. I don't understand. Why we can't keep it closed? Well, that's right. Right. Well, look at that. Yeah. 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 Randy, I go, wait. go ahead, Randy. <laughs> okay, first of all, all the beach closures happened in the 1970s as a um, legal case from the state sued Long Beach and other cities to give pedestrian access to the beach. 60% of the beach has to be closed during the summer. We chose which portions of the beach to close. That's why we have those signs there. And it's between, again, um, April 15th and Labor Day. So that was chosen by us in order to resolve the court case based on the 1970, I think, two Shoreline Protection Act. And, and if I recall, that's the act that the state did because of also the EPA federal requirements as to people having access to the beaches and also all the other access points that we have around town to the bay and to the beaches um, all exist because of that. The It was our choices, but we had to meet a certain percentage that the, during the summer, pedestrians could safely walk on the beach without vehicles. And so that is where all that stuff came from. Go ahead. Um, you may have heard talking about the e-bikes, whether they should be allowed on the paths or not. Uh, you made a good point in that you know, a lot of elderly people have e-bikes and they only ride 10 to 15 miles an hour and they don't want to be on the roads just like a regular biker does. Mm -hmm. And I know in areas, certain areas, almost every e-bike has a speedometer. Okay. 
a lot of places that has posted speed limits for e-bikes of like 15 miles an hour. I mean, I ride my bicycle 12 to 15 miles an hour. Um, so that's, so if you post a speed limit for an e-bike of 15, they're not going any faster than a normal bike. If, you know, if people would follow the speed limit, that's another question, but that's, but, um, yeah, I don't think it'd be, I don't think it's fair to, to just eliminate e-bikes completely from the, the because, you know, they're, they're using those lanes for the same reason the regular bikers are. They can't keep up with cars and they feel you know, it's not like a motorcycle where you can drive the same speed as a car. You're still going slower. So I want to just riff on what this gentleman just said, and I appreciate what you said. And if we just make a distinction about e-bikes, my wife and I ride electric tricycles. And in general, we're going six to eight miles an hour. Uh, and so I don't want to be pushed out on the Point Brown. I don't ride the Point Brown bicycle path past uh, south of Taurus because I don't want to be run over by a driver texting. So I stay off of Point Brown until I get to Taurus and the paved bicycle path. Uh, um, so my, my, my whole point is, as you consider e-bikes, uh, don't make a blanket policy oh, no. because we're not all riding 1225. And on a tricycle, you're worse on the road than a bicycle. Exactly. Why? Why? Exactly. There's, there's one thing that uh, hasn't come up yet that I think would be relatively easy is if all of our beach access roads had delineated, I don't know exactly how you do it, but delineated bike or pedestrian. That was a planning commission recommendation. I was waiting for somebody to say it. Go ahead. De dedicated. Yeah, it's, a, it's a nightmare when you're driving. Dedicated, yeah. I mean, dedicated pedestrian access on shared beach accesses. Right. And number two is a lot of our pedestrian beach accesses, quite frankly, are crap. You can't get on Butterclam. I don't know if anybody tries to get to the beach on Butterclam in the summer. It's underwater five months a year. A lot of drinking. And yeah, but yeah, the bigger issue is kind of water. So for the walking folks in this, it is really looking at every pedestrian access. And then there's some lost accesses. Somebody brought that up. There's a um Polaris. Polaris, that's one. Polaris is actually used to have a beach access. So if you, anything that crosses those shores Boulevard, there's a city right away, right across it, all the way to the beach. That's just been lost and has never been maintained. So looking at walking access to the beach is a great way to do that. And then connecting it with a safe way to get there is the second piece of that. Right. And that's because we had actually talked about yeah. that. Yeah. Because I mean, I fourth of July, try getting to the beach or during the Santa Sada, Santa Sada festival. I, I try to walk out there to see the sand castles and between cars and kids and bikes, it's just not safe. Well, and I'll even add that even on our walks, if you get across Ocean Shores Boulevard and you're on an access towards the beach, cars are going crazy. You still have to step out, I mean, step out of the way. You're not safe just because you got across. Ocean Shores Boulevard. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, the, the, the shared access is what I call it. Yeah. Are very could be greatly improved for pedestrian bikes and cars. Go ahead, Jean. So I I want to bring up that over a year ago, uh, one of the residents on Dolphin actually brought up what's called speed cushions and did all the research on speed cushions and on the cost of speed cushions that they allow emergency vehicles to go through all of that, but it slows traffic down. And I think it's something that seriously needs to be looked at on those roads that we have nothing we're gonna be able to do with the side of the road. There is no shoulder, there is no that. It also solves, you know, we keep hearing that we're low staff, we don't have the staff to patrol and take care of that. And and it's still an issue. Speak control. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And I know you mentioned it, but the research, this person did massive research on this. It is very low cost to put these speed cushions on, but they also are movable to where you can move them to different areas if you need to also. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something we really need to look at. Well, look at that under, under that would be under Greenways, really. Greenways are connection yes. speaker. Because inherently Greenways is speaker call. Mm -hmm. And you'll see in some cities actually restrict access for Greenways. Yeah. You yeah. can't only get in the one direction. Alex, go ahead. I'd like to speak to the fact that there are so many older folks in Ocean Shores, mm -hmm. and for many of us, electric bikes are what allow us to get exercise, mm -hmm. and we can no longer do some of the uh, other kind of bikes or the, or the walks, 
and that's the future for folks who get limited mobility. So I want to remind you that electric bikes are not just about rushing through, it's something that allows us to get around. And I, I have one, I don't need to put I have one. So my old my, my old fashioned bike for now, but I'll be there yeah. very soon. Anybody else? It's it might be premature in the conversations, but just when we're buildings, when we do start building sidewalks, I wonder if there's like an opportunity to use recycled product products because a lot of those things have incentive programs um, mm -hmm. from the government that yeah. you use recycled rubber or glass or concrete. Um, and, and we've done innovative stuff in the city. And I, I know Marshall will bring up and talk about it, but did you know that the bike lane out here that has a really weird color, if you ever ride on it or walk on it, and has the uh, drop inlets and all that, that's actually porous pavement. Okay. So we've done some innovative things in this town, and we'll continue to look at that to see if there's more ways to do it. Because you know we're a town that you know we live on a sandbar, and sooner or later we got to take care of our what's underneath it. So do we have a map of current bike paths? There are no current bike paths. Oh, existing bike paths in town. Yes, yeah. so I don't think we do. We can publish that because it seems like that's a good starting point, so that we know where we. You know, yeah. what we yeah. have to work with yeah. and like he was talking about the ditches that have to be there in some areas well let's develop areas that yeah. maybe have some stuff in place that we can cut across town yeah there is and so the existing ones and then look at other opportunities to establish bike paths mm -hmm. in neighborhoods and when we say bike paths they're really bike and pedestrian paths correct because when i when i ride my bayside part of the loop i have a 24 mile loop it goes you know Ocean Shores boulevard sand dune Saying do as much as I can around the sewage street and plan. I cut through Green View, uh, get on Marine View because somebody put speed bumps that are terrible for bicycles and oil. <laughs> if you're trying to ride through oil, that's a good idea. Can I ask you your question? So if you go to the city website mm -hmm. and you go to parks, yeah. you click on that, there's a park map. There, there is, and that's from bike lanes. Yep. It oh, does show bike lanes. Yeah. Yeah. It oh, does. So that'd be good for it. Yeah. And, and, and there's, there's very, very few of yeah. those in town. Yes. We right. all know where they are. Right. But they're there. And they, one of the issues I have is they don't connect. Right. They, they don't all, what they do connect with is the beach, though. I will tell you that. They get you to Sand Dune, maybe not safely. Right. But once, yes. you, get, <laughs> but once you get to Sand Dune, then you go, there it is. Oh, good. Well done. Why did you pull that up already? Right? She was working on it. Yeah. On it. And there they are. She's on it. Yeah, so these are the these are all the existing bike paths. Go ahead. I want to check. I'm gonna check Kristen's work. Oh, I know every one of them. Keep going. Oh, she shows Boulevard North. Keep going. By your house, Kristen. Did you get that one? Go. <laughs> yeah, you got it. There it is. This one, nobody can explain to me how this ended up here. <laughs> Talk about a disconnected bike lane. But if you live here, it's great because there's a beach access right across it. Right. Uh, you you get get the 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 one one thing that would be really useful is right there at the end of Sportsman, yeah. there is a kind of a trail that goes out to the beach, and it's great. Right. And it, and it would be well worth having that more improved and at least more. So people could walk out there and walk along that beach, right? Better. And that's what we talked about. That's what we talked about, the, the beach access. It is the, there's the known one. There's the beach, there's the beach drive one. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. That's just up from here. Yes. So how many do you need? How far apart? Yeah, yeah. Well, you go through all of that if you look at beach access. Right. Got to build them, maintain them, and do all that sort of stuff. And the other thing that's not on here, do we have walkers and dog walkers in the in the room? We do. Long time ago, and I've been told this couldn't happen for reasons, but I'm going to beat it. We we'll call it the Mid Dune Trail. It's not the High Dune Trail. It's like a, a dirt or gravel walking trail about midway between the, the dunes and the High Dune Trail. Yep. So if you think about it, it's right where the vegetation first starts to grow. That that trail exists. People use it, maybe not legally in accordance with the Beach Protection Act or the Shoreline Management Plan, but it's heavily walked by people and dogs. It basically is 400 meters from the high water mark. And I don't know if you've been on it, Jay, in areas. It mostly goes from Marine View to Taurus. I think it is its most noticeable. So is, is there an interest in that sort of a three, uh, we call it a, a three to four way use path. It's walking, 
mountain biking, and just as importantly as fire protection access. Yeah. Because it runs just on the ocean side of the wax myrtle and all that other vegetation. Well, that's already that's already there. I mean, no, it isn't. Well, no, it, it is. I mean, you can. There's a there is a path. There is a way you drive it on to Taurus. I've been on it many times. Yeah, but it's it's one not legal because it violates the New Protection Act. Right. But, and two, it's not equipped quite for fire protection. Right, but it is walkable. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I walk it all the time, almost you know, four times a week with the dogs. Right. But it's um. But you got all the other. You got the issue. So I think. We we'll call it the mid dune trail, and how far can that go in each direction? Again, that's an easy, simple one. It's one piece set and bulldoze a blade wide. Um, get around all of the wetlands. There's only here, a few here, out there. I, say, I think yeah. you're making it too simplistic. <laughs> what? You say that it's an easy thing? It's, it's not, it's not easy. No, if, we, if it was easy, it'd be done, right? It's easier, let me put it this way, it's easier than the high dune. John, how far did the wetlands delineation go when you get it for the dune trail? Did it go all the way to Pacific? I think that we have, I think we have a study that we went through because that, that was the original plan to go that direction with the high dune trail. So yeah, I, I, I think that, but we also need to talk about it, extending the high dune trail. Yeah, absolutely. Finish the high dune trail. But this was seen, people have brought this up in the past as an alternative to the high dune trail. The high dune trail is paved tourist, and the, I call it the mid dune trail, which people have asked me about because they do it now is you know sort of a nature trail dirt not you know not a high-end trail that you're going to not ada compliant so you're going to figure out how to do a non ada compliant public trail mm -hmm. well i think as, as a city we lose tourists tourists the long beach i know i as a longtime journalist i once wrote an article about the long beach discovery trail mm -hmm. and the fact that that was opened up Tourists flock to that when that opened up. I know people who go who don't go to Ocean Shores and bypass Ocean Shores for Long Beach simply because it has a seven mile beautiful trail through the dunes that goes from Cape Disappointment all the way downtown to their boardwalk. So I think the more we can do for our dunes trails, the better we're going to do for residents and tourists alike. I think it's mm -hmm. good for business. And a Chicago trail. Yeah. 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 So those are sort of two things people talk about for walking out on the beach side. Yeah. I just want to know where is the high dunes trail? The current high dunes trail? Yeah. John, please. Uh, you know where the Shiloh is? Yeah. It's a chi so the Shiloh, it starts there, it goes out to where it used to be the best west. Behind that? Yeah. 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 page. ADA compliant. It'll 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 be nicer than the Westport track. It has great views of the beach and the wetlands. Is the Oh, I think it's a little bit longer than. I think it's like three quarters. Three quarters. Three quarters. Three quarters of miles. And I just had one more thing. I like to see more bike racks around town. Absolutely. And more of those these kind ones for the electric bikes. The one like out here is harder. To get the heavy bike over. Okay. So we need more of the loopy ones. Yep. Yep. I'm Caroline Emmer. I believe the high dune trail is going to be partly paved and partly not paved. No, it's all it's all paved oh. or it has or it has Board a walk. bridge. Boardwalk or paved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The ADA compliant, you have to have either one or the other. Yeah. So it's going to so, be the boardwalk yeah. or combination paved. of wood and yeah. 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 Yes, please. Um, as we're talking about sidewalks and trails and dog walking and, and stuff, I think it would be great if we could have more um, trash trash posts mm -hmm. uh, so that there's more incentive to pick up trash cans. Yeah, pick up dog <laughs> dog waste and, and candy wrappers and, and stuff. Yeah, we do all of the beach access have them now. And I, I know the guy well that drives every day. Yeah. He picks them all up every morning. <laughs> the weekend guy too. So yeah, again, it's just, you know, we got to maintain it and yeah. we'll figure that out. Go ahead. So when people are walking up the access road on cars to the beach, for instance, and there's the big green in the middle, they don't walk in there because of the goat head. Yeah. It's I mean, awful. that seems like a, I mean, it's not simple to get rid of goat head. It's awful. Yeah. But the poor dogs, I yeah. mean, we're dogless right now because our doggies are gone, but I walked my dog there and had to pick stuff out of their paws and that's our dog beach down there. And I think mm -hmm. that's why people are on the road and we've got cars on the road and yeah, we need to get 
them at least in the median there that's grass and get maybe the goat head off? Yeah, we'd have to list out a lot of things to do. Again, the medians controlling goat heads and medians. I don't let my dogs anywhere near the medians. Of They're the awful. Yeah. yeah. But it's very walkable if, if it didn't have the goat head in it. It is, but as a traffic engineer, I'll tell you again, it's uncontrolled. You don't have like cross the walks and everything else. It's it's a good alternative, but a, a better alternative. No, I just mean just like at sand dune getting out to the beach where all the cars because it gets yeah. narrow in there. Yeah. There's a bunch of land right there that people can walk on. It yeah, has so much about. goat head in it. It's, it's literally dangerous. Yeah. If you have sandals on, yeah, dogs, yeah. kids. You're, you're talking between sand dune and the beach. On it's tarps. a simple little yeah, path. Uh, that's uh, an easy yeah. place yeah. to get. Because I just saw somebody today park on sand dune because they didn't want to take their car down. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of places to well, so no park it down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. park down there. Yeah. We don't like them driving and getting stuck in the sand, right? So could they park someplace and walk through that area? Very, I mean, it's just simple walking, but well, and, and, you can't even do that because of the go down. And again, in signage, a lot of the pedestrian only accesses, if we could figure out how to get people there, have lots of parking. Right. Right. Plan, parks about 25, Marine View parks a dozen. Um, beach doesn't have any, but sort of in general, a good way to get yeah. pedestrians to the pedestrian access. If you're driving right. to walk, mm -hmm. right. if they knew, I mean, people, I see people in town, they say, where's a good take, place to take my dog to walk on the beach? I tell them, go to Butterclean and Pamela Marine View, right. park your car and take the trail, unless it's winter and they're underwater. You can't get there. Mm -hmm. So what you just said, I wonder if the parks by pedestrian map, we couldn't update that map to reflect those parking spaces. <laughs> That should be a pretty easy thing. Yeah. I didn't know that that easy went down there. Well, and water plan at the end of Marine View, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't know to tell people to do that. So that's great. That's yeah. information we need to educate. We need to get them out yeah. and add that. Mm -hmm. you, you, did you nod your head to your ass, Kristen? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not updating the map. It's not the pedestrian park here. Yeah. <laughs> that's not your map. That's a city map. I know. We'll do that. Don't ask me to do that. Wow, this is good. Um, yeah. Anything else? We've got a lot of great ideas to start. Um, Gary, so. just one, one thing that you, that was not on the list mm -hmm. that you need to put because it probably ties everything else is whatever the point ground development, <laughs> the future of that. Oh, because, downtown? Yeah, well, because that downtown development, yeah. a lot of the uh, conversation of whatever we do there is going to impact uh, Ocean Street Boulevard. And so you Again, it might be something where you prioritize of whether or not it's important to do the downtown development or do Ocean Boulevard because the the two the things that you're talking about doing on Point Brown will be impacted yes. because you've got to take traffic someplace. So with, and, that, and that wasn't on the list. Yeah, it is the downtown Point Brown downtown corridor issue. Mm -hmm. You know, and with the sidewalks. And I don't think we talked a lot about walking, and I feel bad about that, but it's why I tried to throw some of the walking things in there. Um, so I'm going to say if we can get it, and we'll post it, it'll probably be the last Tuesday in September at six o'clock here, is when we'll do the next one. We'll get these cleaned up on the list. We're going to do one more talking about these, and I'll get you, Richard. And then we'll add some more from new folks. And the meeting after that, we're going to figure out a way to start getting people to vote on it. So I just want to say thank you, Gary, and I don't remember your name. Mr. Lawler. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.